Hello and a very warm welcome to our online open day. Thank you for joining us and I very much hope you will find the information from the various presentations useful in answering the many questions you may have. My name is Ted and I'm head of the International School here at Dover Brooks. I'd like to give you a brief overview of the school before my colleagues will talk about specific aspects in further details. We are a small international school community with 102 students from 23 countries this year. We pride ourselves on the quality of education we provide, not just in terms of the excellent teaching and our outstanding public examination results, but in the care we take of our students pastorally. For most of our students, we are their first step into education in the UK. And we take this responsibility to settle them into life in the UK as well as life in the school seriously. We start this off with a full induction programme into the school and the beautiful city of Oxford upon arrival. Pastoral support underpins everything we do here at the International School. Each student has a form tutor who works with them on academic feedback and personal well-being. Every morning students meet with their form tutor for 10 minutes before going to their first lesson. Their form tutor is a key person during their time with us and gets to know them really well, as do their house parents in the boarding houses. Our form tutors are supported in their role by a very experienced pastoral deputy head. In addition to the academic lessons, extended projects, wider learning days, extracurricular activities and excursions that Steve, our Director of Study, and Dave, our Deputy Head, will talk to you about, we also want to prepare our students as global citizens in the 21st century, ready to take their place successfully in the world. So we seek to develop their resilience and leadership skills too. We actively encourage this through our house system, student council, the event planning committee, our personal development programme and through a wide range of after school activities as well as our learner attributes. We want our students to be curious, brave, caring, fair, respectful and happy and healthy and these six learner attributes feature in our lessons, assemblies and awards. Our weekly personal development lessons for all students includes topics such as dealing with culture shock and improving intercultural communication, digital safety, personal finance, staying safe in an urban environment, maintaining good mental health or a healthy lifestyle. Our students are creative and we have strong musical and performing arts groups at the school. These talents are showcased at our International uh, Arts Festival every year. It's a highlight of our school calendar and one of the many in-house competitions we have during the year. We do a number of activities with the other sections of the school also. And these include sports teams and practices, whole school performances such as musicals, concerts or theatre, our Duke of Edinburgh award scheme and expeditions with students from the other site, day and residential trips and excursions, for example to theme parks or our annual ski trip. And every weekend our students have brunch and dinner at the sixth form with the sixth formers. I hope these presentations do give you a brief flavour of our vibrant international community and I look forward to answering any questions you may have in our Q&A session later or indeed at any point in the future. Hello, my name is Stephen, I'm the Director of Studies at Dover Brooks International School and I'd like to talk to you about the different programmes that we offer at the International School. There are four different types of IGCSE programme on offer. There's the two-year IGCSE programme, which is the equivalent of years 10 and 11 in the UK, and is available for students who are 14 years old and above. The one-year IGCSE programme, equivalent to year 11 for students who are 15 years old and above. The four or five term programme, where students do one or two terms of year 10, and then go on to the one-year IGCSE programme and the pre-IGCSE programme for students who are 13 years old and above, equivalent to year nine in the UK, where students will do a year to prepare for their IGCSE study. In all of our programmes, students study the same core subjects of English, Maths, PSHE, which is Personal Development, and PE, or Physical Education. On the two-year programme, students will do the equivalent of six optional subjects and on the one-year programme students do three different optional subjects. Students have to choose a science as one of their options and the optional subjects include art, biology, business, chemistry, 
computing, drama, French, German, history, music, Spanish, and physics. So there's a really wide range of options that students can choose from. And we work closely with our students to help them to select the subjects that they want to study based on their university and career aspirations. In addition, many students have the opportunity to do English as a first language or further maths if their maths or their English are strong enough. Students also do an IGCSE in their own language where it's available. So that means that on the two-year programme, students complete the programme with between 8 to 11 IGCSEs, which is the equivalent to what they will be doing in a UK school. And on the one-year IGCSE programme, they finish with between 5 to 8 IGCSEs. We believe that there are several advantages to a Doverbrooks International School education. The first of them is that classes are small. There's a total of maximum, total, maximum of 11 students in a class and an average of between 8 to 10. And that means that students get a lot of personal attention from their teachers. They build up a close relationship with their teachers, which means that we have a real learning community in the school where everybody's working together. Students are studying with other international students in, in class. They have the opportunity through different activities that they do outside of class to meet British students from the other sections of the school. But because they're studying with international students in their lessons, it means that they're learning exactly what they need to know in a way that they need to know it, rather than sinking or swimming in the way that they might in a mainstream British school. The curriculum and the way that we teach is carefully designed so that international students learn what they need to know in a way that they need to know it. And one of, as part of that, uh, many of our teachers have taught overseas themselves. So I taught in Indonesia for 10 years and Ted, uh, the head of the international section, has taught in countries including Thailand and Vietnam. Our teachers are trained to teach EAL students and that training is ongoing and provided by uh, the EAL team with the head of EAL working closely with them. We have a total of nine Delta qualified EAL teachers who work with the subject teachers. And through everything that we do, we aim to develop our students' skills in creativity, critical thinking, collaboration, taking responsibility for their own learning, complex problem solving, and flexible thinking. So those 21st century skills that students need in order to succeed when they go into university or to work. Our exam results are excellent, with 91% of the grades in 2019 being passes and 44% being eights and nines, which is a star equivalent, uh, which we're really proud of. In terms of continuing after IGCSEs, 50% of our students stay at Dover Brooks and the other 50% go on to other schools. And those schools over the last couple of years have included Headington Girls School, Brighton, Cheltenham, Cheltenham Ladies College, uh, Rugby, and many others. One of the defining characteristics of an education at the International School is what we call CLIL, and CLIL underlines everything that we do, and it stands for Content and Language Integrated Learning. And what that means is that in their subject lessons, students are, as well as learning content, um, they're learning the vocabulary and some of the structures that they need to do well in that subject. So for example, in history, of course, they're, they're practicing their past tense and teachers, history teachers support them with that. In their EAL classes, students are learning the different structures that they need to succeed in their subject lessons. In terms of the school timetable, the day starts after breakfast at 8.30 in the morning when students meet their form tutors. And form tutors are really responsible for students' welfare, but also for making sure that they're succeeding academically. They then have four lessons of 45 minutes in the morning, followed by lunch, they meet their form tutor again, 
and they have another three lessons in the afternoon. After that, they have the opportunity to take part in clubs and activities, dinner, and back in their boarding house, they have homework uh, in the evenings. We feel that Dover Brooks International School is a really exciting place to learn, and we're constantly trying to develop what we do. And a recent example of that are the wider learning days, which our year nine and 10 students take part in. And this is where they work with students from other classes who maybe they don't normally work with uh, to complete projects and to solve problems and present something at the end of the day based on what they've worked on. And this integrates music, art, drama, uh, all of the other things that they, they have, have been working on. I'm now going to talk about the track programme, which is something that really is unique to Dover Brooks International School. TRAC stands for Theory of Research, Active Citizenship and Knowledge, and through the three different parts of the programme, we aim to mould our students into active global citizens who really care about the world around them. All students do it on all of the different programmes, um, and their, uh, their timetable to do TRAC for one and a half hours. In the first part of TRAC, Theory of Research, Students learn to research, to uh, look at all of the different academic sources that are out there, to be able to distinguish between a credible source and a source which lacks credibility. And this is really important for one reason for their future uh, studies at university or at A-level, uh, but also as part of our training them to th think critically and think for themselves. In the knowledge component of the program, students think about what theory is, what knowledge is, how we know things, and how our own knowledge fits in with shared experience and with all of the academic research that's been done in the past. In active citizenship, our aim is to mould our students into global citizens who really care about the world around them whether that be in their own country or in the, here in Oxford in the UK. The active citizenship component of the course is mainly project based. So for example, one thing that students have done recently is to produce a reverse advent calendar, um, a collection of uh, presents, uh, which we then donated to um, a homeless shelter in Oxford. And we had somebody from the homeless shelter come into the school to talk to students about what it's like to be a homeless person at Christmas. Running through the programme is also an awareness of global issues. So um, we uh, train our students to, to understand, to think about all of the different global issues that there are in the world, whether that be economics, the environment, politics, etc. We want to know as well what issues students are interested in so that students' own global interests can also be at the core of what we teach in the programme. Discussion, debate, giving presentations are also really important in track. And through discussions, debates and presentations, we help students to build their confidence, but in a way that is um, that they don't feel uh, overly worried about because there's no uh, formal IGCSE assessment at the end of the track programme. Some students on the track programme decide that they want to do an HPQ, which is a, an extended project similar to the EPQ which students do at A-level. And this involves them in academic writing and research about a topic that they're interested in. Recent HPQ titles have included uh, whether um, NASA's colonisation of space is worth the money that's spent on it, or whether artificial intelligence will take over medical care in the future. Hello, my name is David Wareham. I'm the Deputy Head Pastoral at the International School. That means I'm in charge of student welfare but I also oversee the Trips, Excursions and Activities program here 
One of the strong points of our school is definitely our really varied program of trips and excursions. We run two a week, one every Saturday and one every Sunday. Sometimes these are big exciting trips to London, uh, but sometimes they're just smaller local trips in Oxford, for example a boat trip down the river or a visit to one of our many excellent museums. A popular one is always the Bath Christmas Market. Students get to buy gifts before going home on the winter break and of course they get to see the amazing uh, Roman baths. Occasionally when the winter weather is very bad we might not go somewhere else but have an outside provider come in to us. Uh, this winter I took part in a circus skills workshop we ran. I can now unicycle and um, juggle. Very useful skills. Parents will be pleased to know that the trips are at no extra cost and are included in the student fees. Every Thursday morning we have a series of activity options across the school and also off-site. There are a very wide range of choices from trampolining to knitting, dance, even meditation. Every student has to take part in these and we put a lot of effort into them. That's because we think it's a great way for them to learn and develop new interests. Interests which could become a future passion or even a career. It's also a great way for students to meet others who have similar interests. Sometimes it's hard for the shy pupils to make friends outside of their nationality group, but this is much easier when they do an activity with someone because they already share an interest with them. Finally, like most British schools, we have a house system. These aren't physical houses, of course, but groups that each student and also teachers are members of, just like Harry Potter. We have three in our school. I'm in Cooper House, which is sort of the equivalent of Gryffindor, I suppose. The house system features a lot of after-school and weekend competitions. Some of these are sports related. We had a volleyball competition recently that was very popular. But we also have competitions to mark things that are happening throughout the year, like the after-school Pasta Bridge Building competition we held recently to mark National Science and Engineering Week. Cooper House was winning that until the last five seconds when our bridge collapsed, but I won't go into that. I meet the house captains once a week and they actually contribute a lot of the ideas for the house competitions, so they're very much student-led. This is our intention, of course, because we expect our students to be the managers and leaders of the future. We have a really wide variety of after-school clubs as well. Our approach is to try to offer something for everyone. So the students who like sport can take part in one of our extra sport options, such as volleyball, gym, or swimming. But students who are musical can take advantage of the school orchestra who practice after school or the jazz club or the choral club. Even for people who love nothing more than staring at their computer, well, we have a coding club, so there's something even for them. At the other end of the spectrum are the students who love nature and outdoor pursuits. For them, we have scouts, and we also have something called the Duke of Edinburgh Award Scheme. For that, uh, the students have to go on an expedition, stay in a tent, learn how to cook outdoors, and how to navigate with a compass. All teachers are expected to run at least one extracurricular activity. In case you're wondering what mine is, it's Photography Club. Hello, my name is Felisa and I'm Head of Boarding here at Doverbrooks. I'd like to tell you a little bit about our boarding houses, what it's like to be a boarder here and maybe answer some of the questions you've got. We have four different boarding houses for IGCSE students. Our years 9 and 10 students, they live together in either Blenheim House or Marlborough House. These two houses are located in their own grounds just on the outskirts of Oxford. We have a school bus that collects students in the morning and brings them into school and then takes them back at the end of the day. The rooms are mostly single or double with shared bathroom facilities. It's a house for both girls and boys but we have uh, boys floors and girls floors so they're housed separately and they have separate bathrooms. Our Year 11 students live mostly in Nash House or Hayfield House. Nash House is located right opposite the main school building. It accommodates 18 girls, all in double shared rooms with private ensuite bathrooms. 
Hayfield accommodates 19 boys. It's about 10 minutes walk from the main school buildings and the students are all in single or double rooms with shared bathroom facilities. There are pictures of all our boarding houses on our website, so do go and have a look. All our boarding houses are staffed with two members of staff. Each house has a head of house who runs the house and looks after the students um, and is somebody that parents can contact directly should they be worried or just want to hear how their student is getting along and they're supported by a boarding assistant. Each house has a common room, an area where students can relax and watch TV. There's some outside space, uh, students can play games outside uh, and there's also a place where students can make snacks. And of course, all the houses have Wi-Fi. During the week, there's a study period in the evening, giving students time to do their homework. There are also one or two visiting tutors each week. So this is a teacher who's a member of staff at school and who goes to the house and spends the evening with the students, giving the students extra one-to-one -one attention um, and time and help with their studies. Also gives them the opportunity to practice their English more. At weekends, we organise regular activities. Uh, it could be a trip out of Oxford, um, it could be something in Oxford, a sightseeing trip, or it might be an activity at one of the houses, such as painting, uh, a game of basketball, or baking a cake. These activities are usually optional. Students also have um, the possibility that they can sign out and go and meet up with a friend. Um, if they're going to leave Oxford, we must have parental permission in advance. Our primary concern all the time is the safety of our students. So when they do sign up, we have regular registrations uh, so we can make sure they're safe. And obviously we, we need to know where they are at all times. We do want our houses to be welcoming home where our students are gonna feel safe and happy. And there are regular opportunities for students to give us their feedback um, about how they feel and about if there's anything we can do to make them more comfortable. I visit the houses every term and also a weekly student council um, so students can talk to me directly. If you're thinking of coming here you might have lots of questions. I'll try to cover some of the most common questions. So students always want to know about Wi-Fi. As I mentioned we do have Wi-Fi in all the houses but we do switch it off at night. This is to make sure that everybody gets a good night's sleep and is feeling refreshed the next day for school. Uh, students also ask us about diet and about food. We can cater for most diets. Um, might be that you have a particular diet because of your religion or there might be a health reason. But most important thing is to tell us in advance so that we can be ready for you. Some parents worry what's going to happen if their child is sick. Uh, all our students, when they get here, are registered with a local doctor's practice very near school. So if a student is feeling unwell, uh, we can make a decision as to whether they need to see the school nurse who might evaluate them and see if they need to see a doctor, um, or they might just need to have a day in bed uh, resting. And if that's the case, boarding staff will look after them and make sure they're safe. Hello, my name is Nari and I look after admissions at Dover Brooks International School. We run IGCS program for year 9 to 11 who are aged between 13 to 16 when they start. The first step to make an application is to visit our website www.doverbrooks.com. Go to admissions then international school admissions. You can find our online application form and then you can start filling your information. When completing an information, um, we also ask you to upload the following documents. A copy of your passport photo page. If you're already studying in the UK, please also let us have a copy of your residence card. A recent school transcript or school report and a proof of English proficiency. For example, IELTS or Junior TOEFL. Um, this is optional, so if you haven't done one, please don't worry about it. And a personal statement. This is important as it is a way for us to get to know more about you. 
There is no set format for the statement, but you can include information such as yourself, your family, hobbies, interests, academic achievements, and your ambitions. Once we receive a complete application, having assessed your documents, and where appropriate, we'll invite you to sit our online, test, online entrance test in English and Maths. Um, we use a method called password and a lot of other UK leading independent schools are using this tool too. These tests are online based so you do not need to um, travel to the UK to see the test. On the strict invigilation, you can do it either at your current school, your local British Council office or at your educational agency office. The test results are available within two to three working days after you set the test. The next step is to um, attend an interview. Usually we encourage you to visit the school, meet the head of the school, um, meet your future um, teachers and have a personal interview. We also offer a Skype interview for those who are not able to travel to the UK or for any other exceptional circumstances such as COVID-19. You will be interviewed by one of our senior staff, either head of school, deputy head of school or academic director. They're all very friendly and they will ask you about your school life, your country, your city or your future ambitions. Um, the interview is also a very good opportunity for you to ask um, anything about the school. You may be interested in knowing more about our boarding life, excursions, sports or after school activities. These are a part of our assessment and an offer will be made depending on combination factors such as your test result, school report or interview feedback. One of our assessment criteria is your level of English. When you receive your English test result, you will see there is an indicator called CEFR. This stands for Common European Framework of Reference for Languages and it is an international standard for describing language ability. For year 9 entry, you are required to have at least A2 to low B1 and for year 10 entry, low B1 to mid B1 and at least high B1 to low B2 for year 11 entry. When an offer is made and you would like to accept your offer, which we are always delighted to hear, then we will need a complete enrollment form, deposit and a reference from your current school. When completing an enrollment form, please let us know if you have any allergies or if you need any learning support so we can look at the most appropriate assistance for you. There are a few things that need to be ready for your arrival in the UK. For example, if you are from a non-European country, you will require to obtain a student visa. The school will sponsor you for the duration of your program and the visa information will be sent out in June so you can prepare your visa application. You will also hear from our boarding department and a welcome pack will be sent in late July to early August and the welcome pack will contain information such as emergency contact details or which documents you need to prepare for immigration at UK airport. However, we are here for you to answer any of your questions throughout the year, so you don't need to wait until we contact you. I look forward to hearing from you, receiving application, and hope to see you all in September. Hello everyone, this is Anne Jen and I'm from China. The favorite thing I like about Dover Brooks was that the teachers here are always supportive and friendly. Most of them are like my friends and they've always respected me as a person who can take my own responsibility for my decisions. when I was doing my school entrance exams and interviews. I had found out that the teachers in this school really cared about my future development and had the passion to give me the best possible education. My favorite subject is history, which is also my greatest interest. It is a subject which not only taught me a great number of interesting facts, 
but also have trained me for critical thinking and academic skills. I am currently in the Historical Crafts Club on Monday after school, which teach me how to make historical clothing out of daily supplies. I also do French films with my French teacher, who shared really good Fr French films with us. And the significant ones were the one to Blenheim Palace. And I remembered that last year the school had taken us to Royal Albert Hall for the Cinderella Ballet. Though it is a small city, you can easily get almost anything you need in the city centre and wandering in the city is always relaxing and enjoyable since it is such a pretty one and full of hints of history. I'll continue my education in Doverbrook's sixth form. After that, I'd like to enter an university as good as possible and I'd like to continue study humanities in there.